if you cannot articulate your vision mm -hmm. as a man, mm -hmm. where do you plan on taking the woman that you desire? Yeah, yeah. She should be able, well, you should be able to articulate the vision and enroll her in it, and yep. she should willingly go along right. if she sees her, how her purpose is also connected to your vision. A lot, yeah. That just is what it is. So when you don't have a vision, but want someone to follow you, well, bro, where are we going? You know, maybe I need to do a show just for men. Because that, that clip is going viral. Like it's, yeah. ladies are, what, taking an audio of that clip and just listen. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. The clip is just going viral. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Brothers. Yeah. Brothers. It's, it's, why is it insulting for a woman to know what your vision is or to ask you what your vision is? What exactly are we going to do? But you know, it's not just for that though. I mean, I want to know what is, when I find my woman, I want to, what's your vision? Yeah, well, that was the other you know thing. People were like, well, she's waiting on a man. I, you know, I just wish that we would stop taking these 10, 20 second clips. And not, like, if you want to comment with such aggression, just take a step back and maybe click on the profile. And yeah. Google, take a moment and research. research. We are so quick to react to right. these very short clips. Right. You wasted all this energy right. fighting in the comments, and you should have paid attention to who you were even. Or watch the whole video. Or, or go watch the episode yeah. as it's designed. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. designed for that. Because you were speaking truth. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I, you know what I'm saying? You were speaking truth, you know? And I believe that I just need to do a show on men, for men, on why, why do we feel the way that we feel? Why are we intimidated by successful ladies? Why do we get triggered when we hear ladies say, hey, listen, I mean, I'm going to submit to the vision and my man is going to be able to come in and help me win as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't understand why we are intimidated by that. I really don't. Because even growing up, my biological mom is, she's the breadwinner. <laughs> and she's always been the breadwinner, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and my dad wasn't intimidated by that. You know, and I'm like, but why are we intimidated by a successful woman? But I think that when you reduce provision down to financial resources, that's where everything falls apart. Because a man mm -hmm. can provide for his family and for his woman beyond just finances. Yeah. There's a safety yeah. that should come with you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, there's just a nurturing that still will come from men. There's protection. There's like all these other things yeah. that a man can bring and should bring outside of just financial resources. Yeah. And I think there, a lot of men are getting frustrated because women, we are waking up and realizing that because you can pay the bills, that is not enough. Ooh. I need to feel safe with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to feel stable with you. Yeah. Like I need to feel like, you know, just nurtured and taken care of by you spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Yeah. And for so long, because someone could do that financially, they felt like they could neglect every other part of who we are. We are full beings. Mm -hmm. We have a whole soul yeah, yeah. and spirit that needs to be nurtured. And yeah. if someone is not willing to also do the work to take care of that, I think the problem is uh, more women are waking up to, you have to do more than just be able to pay bills. Yeah, yeah, and we do. And men, we have to learn that. Yeah. We because we, I, I'm telling myself, I used to think that. So recently I completed my full estate plan and I'll be real with you, while it was an emotional journey, I can now sleep better knowing my family and loved ones will be taken care of. But did you know that according to a recent study, 60% of African-American adults have life insurance, yet many of those policies may not provide enough coverage to fully protect families in the event of unexpected death. The gap in coverage is a significant concern for black communities, as it can lead to financial hardship and jeopardize generational wealth building. And we definitely can't afford that within our particular community. Now more than ever, it's crucial for African Americans to prioritize life insurance and estate planning. By doing so, you can ensure that your loved ones are well taken care of in the event of your passing covering funeral and burial costs, paying off debts and mortgages, and providing income to help them build true and lasting wealth. So I am asking you, please do not leave your family's financial security to chance.
I want you to get life insurance today with my friends over at Ethos by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance for a free quote or by clicking the link in today's show notes. I want you to protect your family's future and give yourself a peace of mind knowing that you have life insurance today. Hey, let's get back to today's show. Loans, I pay the bills and you ain't got to worry about nothing. Oh, I'm the man. Yeah. As long as he pays the bills yep. and he comes home, yep. then I just got to deal with yep. all the other things. Yep. And then we have these That's unhealthy. awakenings yep. and we are more aware yeah. of what it should actually be. Yeah. And we're just not settling for that anymore. That's and right. that is unsettling for men who are not willing to do the work. Yeah. Let's go there. You said something. You said earlier about self-aware, but you you say something oftentimes that when you say this, I'd be like, Patrice, you got to break that down because I don't know if I really agree with that 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you say we are taught to be self-aware and not soul aware. Mm -hmm. And you say soul aware is we need to be moving off of our feelings. So I'm not going to respond yeah. until I understand what you really mean by that. But break that down yeah. for us. So first of all, that's self-awareness, right? We were all taught, go to school, get a good education, okay. you gather all the knowledge. So we have become information gatherers. Okay. So we sit and we listen to podcast after podcast. We consume the news. We read all the books. We go and get the certifications, the courses. And we feel, mm -hmm. because we know now how to intellectualize our way into and out of anything, okay. that that is the work. Okay. The truth is that's just the beginning. Self-awareness is amazing. Okay. But until you are soul aware, which means you literally have the ability to discern okay. what, part of inf what part of the information you've taken in you can actually act on, you really don't have anything. Like okay. information without being able to implement it in alignment with what you're called to do Ooh. means nothing. Right. So we have a lot of very self-aware people yep. who don't go do the things that they know God called them to do. Now you're talking. Right. OK. So when you become more soul aware, yeah. you don't just intellectualize. Yes. Everything. Right. I, I, ha I halfway want to say spiritualize, but I'm I'm not even going to say that, though, Anthony, because I've realized. In our society, I feel like intellectualizing things and then spiritualizing things are what actually keep people stuck. Yeah. So I don't want to say that, but... But now you got to. Well, I don't want to say the spiritualized piece because a lot of us spiritualize the scenarios that we're in and justify staying in toxic situations or staying in place because we spiritual we spiritualize it we're no, like no yes. no 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 this we is, do i mean i i understand what you're saying but i think that's toxic spiritual right yes you know what i'm saying because it's like i get it there are some believers who believe that hey once you say i do if he is emotionally abusing you and it's not physical abuse you stay you stay mm -hmm. false <laughs> False. I have no problem saying that. As an ordained man of God, got my license from A and B Zion four years just to get mm -hmm. my minister license. I know the word of God. That's false. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I I I believe this is why I want to say so and spiritualize, but healthy. But healthy. Spiritualizing. Yeah. Yes. But healthy. So. Ooh, that's but, good though. Now I like you. Rewind. Now you, now you like me again? Uh, I agree with everything you say now. <laughs> because I thought you were just going off, we got to move how we feel. And I think some people move off of their feelings, not off of gathering the correct information and making sure that that, that information aligns with the spirit man as far as in uh, their, their assignment, mm -hmm. their purpose, their calling. Mm -hmm. But some people will skip over all that. Well, I like him. He looks real good. Or oh, no, I no. like this. And that it's off of their feeling. And you talk about this in, on your Redefining podcast, like on, with your six pillars. And I'm like, this is why I got to go check out a show. But let me tell you. So this is why you have to spend time in the faith pillar, though. That's good. Because you can trust your feelings. I believe you can trust your feelings more when you understand what's like fueling your feelings, yeah. like when you are like sitting with God, when you're taking the time to actually study your word, when you're meditating, when you're praying, when you're journaling, when you're really getting to know yourself, you can trust your feelings. Many of us don't trust our feelings because we were taught to dismiss our feelings in favor of someone else's teachings. Mm. So then we go intellectualize, well, pastor so-and-so said this, or my mama said that, and we don't really have a frame of reference That's for how that connects with us. Yeah, yeah. So this is why I've always said, 
you should reject any advice that does not align with what you've been assigned to do. Mm. It can be great advice. Yeah. Right? Up here. Right. So right. you're aware. Right. This sounds great. Self-aware. Self-aware. Okay. But your soul is like, this ain't for us. Facts. So because a coach, we're both coaches, yeah. so because a coach lays out 10 steps, I still have to filter through yeah. and see out of these steps, which are the ones that are really aligned with me Yeah. and then make them my own, yeah. right? Yeah. In order to truly have success. Yeah. What most of us try to do is run with other people's thoughts, words, ideas, concepts, and then force ourselves into that box. And when we don't get the same success that they have, we're frustrated. Well, you didn't filter that through your soul. You took some self-awareness, like you took like, oh, okay, I think I need that. And then you just grab what they had and then you ran with it. And then you wonder why it doesn't pan out. Facts. There's, there's no filter. But I always say, many of us say we're believers or this or that, especially in, in your community. Yeah. Do you make time to actually practice what you say you believe? Come on. Because if you make time to practice it, you can trust yes. your feelings because you also understand that what's guiding you is really the Holy Spirit. You understand that it's the God within. I don't I don't see God as some like outside force over there, big man in the side. I feel like God is in me. Absolutely. But he is in you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying he dwells in us.